Hello, I'm uh, Mike Gill, known as Michael J. Gill, um, with my new book, and uh, doing very, very well, The Whiskey Affair. Haven't seen one of my videos in uh, since before Christmas, I don't think, so Happy New Year as well. Been busy promoting this book. Um, the Isle of Butte actually uh, covered it, which is where my fictitious distillery is. I think some of the locals would really like a distillery now to go with their uh, microbrewery. And uh, once they get to uh, 12 years old, they'll have a fantastic single malt whiskey like I have in here. Um, try get a copy. Lots of true whiskey facts as well. So I decided to go back to a long, long time ago when I wrote my book Whiskey Today in 2006. And I raved about whiskey and cheese pairings. And uh, to be honest, uh, my passion is back. I went to a wine event about two weeks ago and uh, thought the wine and food went extremely well. But the wine and cheese, no, not so much at all. Um, I actually think that whiskey goes better with cheese than anything else. And one of the things you have to do if you really, really want to try this, and I'm not close by to come and do a whiskey and cheese pairing for you, is you have to have really almost as much passion for cheese as you do for the golden liquid known as whiskey. Um, so today, what I have is I have a cheese that I found that is very, very popular in Britain, harder to find in Canada, but I managed to snag some, Barber's 1833. And uh, yeah, it really does go back that far. It's a cheesery in Somerset. And one of the unique things uh, about these cheesemakers is they use Holstein Freestone cows, um, almost exclusive with this cheese. Um, it, it gives a very deep richness to the cheese. And uh, I think they have 2,000 in their herd, um, aged for 24 months, which is, is quite long. And one of the things that fascinated me about this cheese is it's a sharp cheddar, which probably, I don't know, 80% of, of Britain is cheddars, sharp cheddars. But um, what you get mid to end palate on this cheese is you get uh, toffee, caramel, vanilla. So I immediately thought, okay, the pairings today need to be a single malt whiskey. That's, that's kind of what I do. A single malt whiskey uh, finished in ex-bourbon casks. Well, that used to be easy. Now it's really hard because uh, most distilleries will have some influence of sherry at the end. So even if you have 10 years ex-bourbon and then two years sherry, uh, in the old days, that ex-bourbon cask would give you all that toffee, caramel, vanilla um, that I actually liked, you know, sort of creme brulee type, and um, not so much of that anymore. Uh, so what I did was I sort of went back and, and thought about the, uh, the odd single malt that still does keep to ex-bourbon, and I actually found um, an old friend of ours, Aberfeldy 12. Okay, Aberfeldy, uh, from the famous Dewar's whiskey family, um, founded and opened in 1898. And yes, the reason they opened where they did in uh, Perthshire, Speyside Highland, is because of the water source. Uh, which is another subject, but, um, you know, the water source is extremely important in making great whiskey. This is definitely bourbon. Ex bourbon cask. You can smell the vanilla on it. No, there's not a lot to this whiskey. There's not meant to be. Um, the Dewar's blend uses this whiskey just much like in um, some of the high end Johnny Walkers. They, they, the whiskey, the master blender, must have Cardu. Uh, very similar. A lot of space ciders that we don't get the single malts uh, is because they're so popular with the blenders. They're soft easy, uh, perfect for blending. And this is the Aberfeldy 12. So as you know, if you've watched me before, what I'm doing is I'm trying to find a perfect marriage, not a contrast, like there is a lot in wine, and you really have to do them together. You can do them separate. Um, 
if you're having a whiskey and cheese pairing night, then obviously make it last. You're going to nose, you're going to taste the whiskey, you do the chewing motion and get the whole palate, the whiskey on the whole of the palate. But for this, and I don't want to go on for too long, um, we're going to go straight to what I like, which is whiskey and cheese together. So we take some uh, barbers. Keep that around. This is wonderful. No overmasking of, of one or the other. Absolutely beautiful. Definitely brings out the caramel vanilla. So that's Aberfeldy with Barber's 1833. So the second, because I was slightly restricted with single malts and only ex bourbon these days, I had a last minute thought. Why not? Let's try a bourbon. <laughs> now this is actually not like your mainstream bourbons uh, that's you know aged for four years. This is nine years. Uh, small batch, Knob Creek. Knob Creek has got something in common with Aberfeldy in that their location where they built the distillery was on the water source also. And uh, great story actually that the water source runs through um, President Lincoln when he was a child, he's growing up, um, this stream went through the property of Abe Lincoln as well as Knob Creek today. Um, this is obviously going to have vanilla, caramel, toffee. It's a bourbon. And not like your regular bourbons that you get. Um, bourbons today, uh, some of the micro, smaller producers make absolutely wonderful whiskey. It's been a while since I've featured bourbon on this channel, so. Wow. Okay. Whoa. Well, yeah, they're both very, very good. The um, bourbon, believe it or not, is a little bit more powerful than the cheese, whereas the Aberfeldy was um, perfect in balance. There you go. I want you to try them. Aberfeldy or any uh, 10 to 12-year-old whiskey you can find uh, where you know it's finished in ex-bourbon casks, and then try the Knob Creek 9. And let me know on the channel um, which you like best. Till next time. Bye.